Perhaps the greatest woman whom we have detailed information about, and that is Khadija binti Khuwaylid, the very first wife of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Khadija, as you all know, Khadija was the most beloved wife to our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In the story of Khadija, we learn that even in Jahili society, women had a place and status, not anywhere close to what they had after Islam, but still Khadija is earning her own money, and she controls her money, and she is an independent lady. So there is some room for independence even in Jahili society. Uh, Khadija being a woman with a lot of money, actually had a negative side to that as well. And that, is, that was that people tried to swindle her and take advantage of her. How so? Because she cannot undertake business herself. It's a man's world out there. She cannot go to the marketplace and buy and sell. She cannot travel uh, like other people travel to go for, uh, for, for business. So what she would have to do is she would find a business manager who had to be a male. And this business manager, she would give him money, 10,000 gold coins here. You go and buy, let's say, uh, leather, or you buy spices, or you buy trade. And then you go sell it, let's say, in Syria. You will go sell it in Syria. And then you buy other goods from Syria, and then come back, and I will give you a percentage of this profit. Now, can you imagine in those days, there is no record keeping. These are all illiterate people. Uh, Khadija could not read or write as well. There's no, there's no computerized mechanized system of seeing what the inventory or stock is. It goes without saying, whoever she found turned out to be an evil person, a fraudster, a trickster, who would take a large percentage. Many times Khadija would be left with hardly anything. Many times it would be a bare minimum of profit. And Khadija understood and realized that this was a very delicate situation to be in. How can she find it? If the man comes and says, oh, it was a very tough business year, I couldn't sell this item except for uh, 10, 10 gold coins, and it's worth 50 gold coins. How does Khadija know what happens in Syria? How does Khadija know what is, if this man is pocketing 40 gold coins and giving her back only 10? Khadija has no way of finding out. And so for a number of years, Khadija kept on getting uh, swindled. She kept on getting, uh, if you like, short chains. And this was what led her to our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Khadija has a sister, her name is Hala. Hala owns some sheep. She owns some sheep. And in the course of finding a shepherd for her sheep, she f heard of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As you all know, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he was a very young man, when he was a teenager, the very first job that he found was that of a shepherd. He would literally go and take uh, the, these sheep, these goats, and he would go outside of the city of Mecca and find pasture for them and come back and he would be given copper coins, what we, what we now call pennies and cents. He would be given some a shepherd. Coins. So Hala finds out that there is a person who is taking care of sheep and that's the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and so she negotiates with the Prophet Sallallahu and he had a co-worker as well we don't know his name he had a co-worker he had two people uh, that uh, that were working with him sorry he had one person working with him so they were a team of two people if you like a little corporation a little business of two people so Hala agrees with these two people one of whom is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to go out with her uh, sheep and they do this for a number of times they they take out for a number of days a number of weeks until finally it time is come to pay them for their efforts so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told his companion he said to him uh, the companion said let us go collect our wages it's time for our paycheck to come the Prophet Sallallahu said why don't you go and collect it on my behalf I am shy to approach her in other words she's a woman and I don't want to approach her why don't you go and take my wages and then give it to me later on so the man came alone to Hala Hala said where is your companion in other words I hired the two of you I should pay you half and pay him half so he said he was too shy to come and he instructed me to collect his wages and I will give it to him at this Hala said I have never seen a more perfect gentleman and a more uh, modest and shy man than your companion, i.e. the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And it so happened that Khadija was sitting there at this time when this transaction is taking place. And that was the first time that she heard such noble praises of this human being, our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the first time something entered her heart about uh, him. 
slowly but surely the uh, word spreads that the Prophet ﷺ is a very trustworthy person. And he is, as you all know, he was called Al-Ameen in Mecca. You all know this. And so the word spreads that he is a very honest person. And so Khadija sends a message to the Prophet ﷺ saying that, I have heard that you are a very honest man and I have a business proposal, a business transaction for you. Why don't you take my caravan to Syria and I shall give you one third of the profit. In other words, you just be the business manager. You be the business manager, you buy and sell, and you will get one third of the profit. Now imagine here the Prophet ﷺ is a shepherd, he's getting literally uh, pennies. This is now a business offer, maybe it's like a hundred thousand dollars, right? Imagine this is a, a massive difference. I mean, from, from being a shepherd to becoming a CEO of a company. That's literally the jump that, that he is being given. The Prophet ﷺ is so excited, he rushes home to Abu Talib and he says, oh my uncle, so and so Khadija has given me a business uh, offer. Do you think I should accept it or not? And Abu Talib tells him, of course my son, she is a noble lady and uh, inshaAllah ta'ala, you will get much money from this endeavor. And so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam accepted uh, this offer and he took the caravan. According to one report, uh, Khadija also sent her personal uh, slave and servant Maysara as well with him. And Maysara came back Firstly, the Prophet ﷺ, obviously because not only was he the most honest and the most trustworthy, but also because of his manners and akhlaq, also because Allah blessed him, he made a huge profit, the likes of which no other uh, manager had ever made before. He made the largest profit that any manager had ever made before. Not only that, but because he's so honest, he comes and he gives Khadija obviously down to a penny, the full two thirds, and he accepts the one third, right? So Khadija, maybe she's getting 5,000, 10,000 gold coins every year. Now she gets 80,000, 100,000 gold coins. She gets a massive amount of money. And Maysara comes back and he cannot stop talking about his companion, about the Prophet ﷺ. He cannot stop praising how gentle he was, how fair he was, how honest he was. And there are even reports that Maysara said that wherever he went, there was a cloud above him and this happened and that happened. So, so many reports. Now, obviously, Khadija is now uh, very much, if you like, uh, interested and, uh, uh, and there's no question. And some of you might feel um, strange for me to say this, but there's nothing at all to say that she had some feelings for our Prophet wasallam. This is a part of being a human being, that it is natural to have uh, feelings for somebody else. It's natural to have uh, uh, attraction in such a scenario and situation. And there's nothing haram whatsoever. There's nothing makru whatsoever in speaking like this. Khadija obviously felt an inclination. She felt the beginnings of, 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 a, of, of a love for the Prophet wasallam, And so, she hinted to another servant. Khadija now sees the immense amount of uh, wealth and the honesty and the akhlaq and the blessings coming from our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And like any shy woman, she cannot obviously uh, propose directly, but she hints some people, some versions say it was a close friend, other versions say it was a servant and her name was Nafisa. Uh, she hints to Nafisa that what a, uh, handsome and young man this is and would it not be good if he found a, a good wife for him now obviously she is a single lady and she would not be speaking about a man unless she herself is interested so Khadija get uh, Nafisa gets the point and so it is says that Nafisa uh, visited the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and of course, this is before the time of any Islam, any laws of Islam. So there's no hijab, women are visiting men. There's no issue uh, Islamically about that because Islam hasn't come yet. And so Nafisa visits the Prophet ﷺ and says, you are a, a young man, you should be looking for a wife. Why don't you find a wife? And the Prophet ﷺ said, who will, who will possibly marry me? I'm a shepherd. I'm living in my uncle's house. To this point in time, the Prophet ﷺ did not even have his own apartment, his own house. He's living in the roof, of, under the roof of Abu Talib. So he's saying, who would possibly want to marry me? I cannot afford a wife. What woman of the Quraysh would want to give herself up, you know, and live in, in dire and abject poverty with me? And Nafisa says, what if that woman would be Khadija? What if Khadija would be interested in this? And she wants to see the response of the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ said, and why would Khadija be interested in me? In other words, he didn't say, I'm not interested in that type of lady. Rather, he put it back to her. Why would Khadija be interested in me? So when 
he said this, Nafisa understood that the Prophet did not have any problem with Khadija. That's what she wanted to hear, that the Prophet is open to the prospect of Khadija uh, basically marrying him. If he had said, oh, I, I cannot marry her because of this, because of that, that would have been the end of that. But she put it back to her. He put it back to her and he said, why would somebody like Khadija from such a noble family, so rich and so well off, why would she be interested in basically the shepherd uh, uh, living in the house of his uncle? Why would she possibly be interested in someone like me? And so when this was basically uh, uh, said, Nafisa immediately went back and uh, Khadija uh, was then officially betrothed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When the revelation came to him, it was so powerful that he truly did not know how to handle it. Then came Khadija, may God be pleased with her, the wife of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, who was there to reassure him. Now the words that Khadija said to the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him were that, Wallahi la yukhzik Allahu abada, which means God will never disgrace you. God will never disgrace you. Now she then proceeds to give the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him the reasons why God would never disgrace him. And I want you to think about this for a moment. When, when you think about religion, when you think about worship, and when you think of the effects of worship, why would God not disgrace you? She didn't say to him, it's because you've been praying and meditating for months and months and months and months. It's because you go stay in a mountain for all of these weeks and you, you isolate yourself and seclude yourself from the world. She said, God would never disgrace you because you uphold the ties of kinship, because you are generous to the needy, because you, you, you take care of the poor and the orphan. So she started to mention some of his good to society, his character, peace be upon him. And in essence, this was the call of the Prophet Muhammad Muhammad, peace be upon him, when he says that I was only sent to perfect good character. The nicknames that he gained as a sadiq al-Amin, the trustworthy, the honest, the one who was beloved, the one who could always reconcile between people, the one who would always go out of his way to take care of the orphan. And so it was only befitting now that he found a woman of good faith and good character that truly understood that and truly had that insight and could come to him from that direction and could say to him, O Prophet of God, God is not disgracing you. This is God honoring you. This is God giving you virtue. This is God elevating your status because of all of the people that you have been elevating your entire life. And so with that, I just wanted to focus for a moment. You know, they always say uh, behind every great man is a great woman. But in Islam, besides every great man is a great woman. We found that Khadija, may God be pleased with her, stood with the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in his hardest times. And so he never would forget her. It was even in the time when, when you know, they left a life of comfort in essence because she was a successful businesswoman. Even whenever they were forced to abandon that comfort and were all of a sudden placed under economic boycott, which would eventually result in the death of Khadija, may God be pleased with her because she was forced to eat only leaves. Even with that, she never complained to the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. She never said to the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, what is this mess that you've got, gotten us into? She only spoke words of encouragement and reassurance. And so we need to learn that as individuals sometimes with our husbands and with our wives and with our parents and with our children, with our brothers and our sisters, we have to come to this this beautiful character of being able to reassure one another, to pick each other up, to beautify one another. And especially with the husband and the wife, as we see with the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and with Khadija, peace, uh, may God's blessings be upon her, that uh, God says in the Qur'an, Hunna libasun lakum wa antum libasun nahun, that she is a garment for you and you are a garment for her. And in essence, a garment covers up a flaw and it beautifies that person's weakness. And we see here that completing, that even the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, needed that reassurance and God blessed him with a woman like Khadija, peace be upon her, to stand by her husband and to truly be the, the first believer in her husband, in the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and to reassure him, because of your character, God will never put you down.